Welcome back once again to the Past is Alive. Today we're doing a video on an awesome, awesome toy line and one of my personal favorites. Actually, second favorite of all time and still is today. All the way back to the year 1988. So fuel up the freaking time machine and come with me. Because today we're going back to a place called Empire City for the Cops and Crooks toy line. Join me. Cops. Central organization of police specialists fighting crime in a future time. Protecting Empire City from Big Boss and his gang of crooks. sick intro one of my favorites of all time just super epic the show is really really awesome it sucks that they canceled it in such a short time frame but um they do make them on dvd so if any of you are interested remember the show when i own it on dvd you can go on ebay and get the entire series for like 10 bucks maybe even less so that's pretty awesome so let's jump right into these cops and crooks these we're gonna do the cops first um i'll show you the whole first series one they made two series um, I own the first series. These are the ones that I had mostly when I was a kid and never collected series two for whatever reason. I was probably moved on to who knows what else other toy line by the time those came out. But we're starting with series one. And the significant thing about the Cops and Crooks is that every single figure came with actual caps to load into um, their guns there, which was really, you know, nothing crazy at the time in 1988. But, you know, in today's world, that would not go or fly whatsoever. You'd have lawsuits and kids getting burned and everything else. But anyways, that's what made this toy line so significant. The figures were awesome, too, and well put together. But we're going to start off with Barricade. And as you can see there, he is the Crooks Control Officer. Um, comes with a shield gun. Um, you can pick him up for... I don't see him too often nowadays. I want to say I got this guy. When I first got into collecting again, I started buying all these Cops and Crooks figures up. Was one of my go-to's for buying toys. I think I paid twenty bucks for this at a Comic Con, um, Steel City. Uh, I'd be surprised if you'd find him for less than fifty or sixty uh, nowadays. He doesn't pop up very often. And um, every single cop here had a cop's ID card, so I showed their actual real name. His nickname is Barricade, but this is the real name, Stan Bach. And it also shows how to load in the caps there. He had kind of like a it was like a riot weapon. The the thing on the front there. Um, but it shows the rest of the toy line as well. It shows all the good guys. Um, and then also the crooks as well. And the card in this guy is decent. Um, not too bad at all. He is punched, which isn't major. These, are, these guys are hard to find um, unpunched. Pretty rare to come by. If you do, they're gonna go for a pretty penny. But that is Barricade. Next up, we have Sundown, uh, the cowboy gunslinger. And um, you can see his accessories there. He got some caps. Also, he has these crazy guns. Texas Sheriff, it says there. Um, they all had these like futuristic, the show is set in the future. I guess I should have told you guys. It doesn't really distinguish what time frame. It's like kind of around our time. Um, so they, they had like a, a good bit of them had these like pods they stand on and fly around on. Um, Empire City was a futuristic city. So there's a cowboy hat there. And 
Sundown is actually unpunched. So this guy now I'll probably go for like 75, 80 bucks. Honestly, I think I paid 20 for it. Can't remember where, but there is Sundown's ID card. And as you can see there, there's a real name, Captain Walker Calhoun. And then also how to load his caps. And then you have the standard um, first series toy line picture. But he sells for a decent amount nowadays. Never had this one when I was a kid, so pretty happy to pick it up when I did. Following Sundown is one of my personal favorites of all time, Highway. I had this guy when I was a kid. I still have the original figure somewhere in my parents' attic. But um, played with it a lot, and it definitely shows. Whenever I do the uh, pulling toys on my parents' attic video, you'll see how worn he is nowadays. But always liked Highway a lot, uh, the toy, and also his character in the cartoon. As you can see, he also has a futuristic uh, jet pod there with a, a bomb that attaches to the bottom of it. And also, he has a, a nightstick there and a gun, and he has caps. And he was always really cool, had sunglasses on and stuff. And he is a highway patrolman. And he, this guy is punched. Be very, very hard to find him un, or unpunched somewhere. There's an old Toy Depot sticker on there which I've never even been to that store or really heard of it and there's his ID card and it tells you how to um, put the cap into the bomb that attaches to the jet pod and the standard uh, toy line there picture. but one of my personal favorites pretty stoked about him and these are all in Zolo cases by the way next guy up Always loved this guy in the cartoon. Never had the figure when I was younger. This is long arm. He is pretty rare to find nowadays. And he has the original Toys R Us sticker on. And he is punched as well. He has some accessories there. Two different kinds of guns. And um, some caps as well. Comes with a hat. As you can see, long arm patrol officer. These cases were made by Zolo World and they're standard to the Coffs and Crooks line. There's only one figure that I found that wouldn't fit in these cases because of the accessory going outside of the bubble. I still had to substitute, actually two of them, I had to substitute those and put those in real Ghostbusters cases, which you'll see later in the video. And this is his ID card. Sergeant PJ O'Malley. Otherwise known as long arm. And there you have uh, the instruction on how to load his cap into the gun. And the standard uh, Series 1 picture. So I always love the uh, graphics on these two. Card artwork on these were, was awesome. Love it. He was, I feel like he was one I could never find on the shelves, peg hooks, whenever I was a kid. I always looked for him, I could never find him. So, couldn't own him in 1988, but it's nice to own him now. And... 2019. I think I picked him up uh, in a Cops and Crooks lot. I think I paid like $450 for it on eBay. There was a few figures like him. You'd buy this guy right now off eBay. It'd probably cost you like 150 bucks. So I picked up I think eight or nine figures and like two or three vehicles in that lot for like 450 I want to say. And the one vehicle alone is valued at like 200 bucks. So I sold a bunch of the doubles that I got in the lot and made my money back easily and basically got these guys for free. Him and a couple other ones, so pretty awesome there. That's a long arm. And next up, one of my personal favorites from uh, childhood is Officer Bowser and Blitz. And as you can see there, a canine officer and a robot dog. Played with him all the time when I was younger. This one's an unpunch or a punch card. And you can see his gun, two guns, and also the caps. Um, when you turn this uh, little dial there beneath Blitz, you, there's like paper inside of there that would rotate and uh, look like it was actually like a, a red siren going off. So that was pretty sick. As you can see, he's kind of bionic there in the future. Always loved him. Still have the original one. I'll have to pull that out of the attic too as well here soon in the future. But pretty sick. One of uh, Eric and I's first dogs, the German Shepherd, was named Blitz too. So... I always like that too as well. And there is Bowser's ID card. 
and also his cab instructions and the standard line. Make sure the store line. So cool artwork on that one too. He always had a real scruffy voice in the in the uh, cartoon. Kind of like annoyed me, but cool, really cool character. And next we have Sergeant Mace, and I always like this guy too. And he is the SWAT team leader. And he's got what looks to be like a bazooka type gun. Also, he is a jet pod as well. Another gun down there in caps. Um, cool, some cool artwork there. Never had mace when I was younger, I don't believe. Um, this guy also came with another lot um, off eBay. So, he will run about easily 100 bucks nowadays online. And his real name officer Colt Howards. But overall he's in pretty good shape. I want to say his bubble is like lifting a little bit down there, but I'm not gonna complain. That was part of the big lot that I got, so definitely was well worth it. And last but not least, the leader of the cops. Bulletproof. I always loved this dude. Just he was just tough as nails. Awesome, awesome figure. Also pretty valuable too. I see bulletproof selling nowadays for easily 150 on eBay. And he is on an unpunched card or a punch card. Sorry about that. Sick artwork. He was like a bionic human being as well. He's got some cool accessories there. He's got a gun and a suitcase with the handcuff attached to it. Um this is a federal agent, and there you have his ID card as well. If you'd like to pause that and read it, he was the bane of the big boss's existence, which you see there, and you'll see soon in the video the kingpin. And overall, um, he's in really good shape. I think I paid, uh, I think I got him for like 60 bucks at uh. The Steel City Con, I want to say. I picked up a lot of these at Steel City Con. I've never seen any more at all. They're they're pretty rare to come by, honestly. Now you pay arm and leg on eBay for any of these guys. So That's Bulletproof, and that is the entire Series 1 Cops line. Now we're going to do the Crooks next. All right, so leading off a of scum of the Empire City, the Crooks, we have Dr. Bad Vibes is up first. As you can see, the card art is a little different. They have added the end crooks down below it to differentiate who's who, who's bad, who's good. You got some cool artwork there. You got Dr. Bad Vibes himself. You got his robot. As you can see, it says there, Mad Scientist. And there you have his robot. And you have some mechanical limbs and his weapon as well, gun with caps. And he's pretty detailed. He's got a transparent head there. And you can see his brain. He's got bright orange hair, so looks like a typical mad scientist in the future. This guy is on a punch card. I want to say I picked this up for about 20 bucks at a toy show four or five years ago, maybe. And there is his bio. Now you see these have changed to wanted. If you want to pause that and read along with it, what it says about him. And then you have a uh, the instructions for it to load his cap gun and then you have the same card art as with the cops So that's dr. Bad vibes pretty cool pickup. He's not too expensive if you were to start collecting this toy line I mean he'd be probably probably a good one to start with you probably pay. I don't know Eh, probably 35 40 bucks for him somewhere in that range So nothing to break the bank really starting off with him as if you would with this guy one of my personal favorites, Buns with Boom Boom. This dude freaking rolls. I had him when I was a kid too. Always loved this figure. Played with him until his legs fell off, literally. Still have uh, the rest of his remains there in a, in a bin somewhere in my parents' attic. This guy is hard to track down now. If you do find him, you're going to pay at least 150 bucks, maybe even upwards of 200 bucks. Um, whenever I got back into collecting, I think I might have paid... 74 and 75 so as you can see the prices are steadily increasing on a lot of these old toys I got into it at a perfect time before they skyrocketed and took off 
but this dude's sick. Uh, basically, as you can see there on the card art, his jacket opens and guns pop out of his insides, his chest. He, ca he carries a Tommy gun, as you can see there, and he carries that Tommy gun inside of a guitar case. So, this dude is really, really uh, gnarly, I should say. He's got a fedora hat there, cool suit, he's got the caps with him. Buns McBoom Boom. As you can see, it's his machine gunner on there, but yeah, he was a sick villain. Loved him. Any of you guys ever saw the movie The Fugitive, too? The uh, the bad guy on The Fugitive, the movie with Harrison Ford from like 93 or whatever. This dude like, looks exactly like the the guy that plays him to a T, the one arm man. Pretty cool. So that's Bun Buns and Boom Boom. There's his wanted bio down there. If you want to freeze that. A.K. Nikki Itchy Finger Johnson, Smoking Joe Rub Out Robinson. There's his arrest record, convictions, and um, the standard card. But all around sick figure. I love this dude. I'm so happy that I own him. We got him a good time. But definitely an awesome figure to have in the personal collection. So that's Buns with Boom Boom. And following Buns with Boom Boom, we have. Berserko. Berserker was always really annoying in the, in the cartoon. I feel like he was always messing stuff up and getting yelled at by Big Boss. You will see here in a second. I feel like Big Boss is always pissed off at him. He's got two guns and he's got caps and he's also unpunched as you can see. And I know I got a good deal on him too but I can't remember what it was. And as you see down here it says punk. He's like a thug. One of uh, Big Boss's lackeys. He got some cool artwork there. And his shirt says, Bad is good. And he's got a big, cheesy grin on his face. It looks like he's up to no good. So that's Berserko. And there's his wanted bio, aka Arrogant, Danny Decadent, Airhead. As you can see, Airhead. Um, there's his arrest record, outstanding warrants. And that is Berserko. So, pretty sick. And this is one of the ones I was talking about before where um, his accessory goes outside of um, the regular uh, Cops and Crooks' holo case. So I had to accommodate him by buying a different kind of, different kind of case. These are pretty big uh, cards that these come on. So I had to use a real Ghostbusters case. As you can tell, I hate how much uh, leeway and space there is between the actual bubble um, on the card and the freaking bubble in the case, but oh well, they haven't done one to, to accommodate him and buttons and boom boom too is the other one that you had to get a, a special case for a different case didn't fit and one of my personal favorites as well from childhood is the infamous rock crusher. He was kind of a numbskull too um, Another thug as you can see on here escape convict his card is a little bit beat up up top there, as you can see. There is some creasing to that, but not a big deal. I think I paid 20 bucks for him at uh, Steel City Con. Now you'd probably pay 75, 80 bucks for him if you see him on eBay. But he's got a wrecking ball there. He's got a jackhammer and, um, I don't know, a generator, I guess, and some caps. So load the caps into the jackhammer there, then I'm going to fire off. So. And I want to say, I played with him to death, too, to the point where he has no legs. I think he's just, he's just upper body somewhere in a bin in my parents' attic. But still somewhat intact. And there's Rock Crusher's Wanted Bio, a.k.a. Jack Big House, Granite Head, Pebble Brain, Hands Up. And his convictions, if you want to pause those. You're supposed to cut these out. But, uh... I never did that when I was a kid. I wish I would have kept these cards when I was younger instead of just tearing the figure out and throwing them in the trash. <laughs> it sucks. But yeah, and probably my um behind behind buttons and boom boom, he was definitely my favorite, uh second favorite uh villain. He was pretty awesome. So that's Rock Crusher. And the very last, but certainly not least, Kingpin of the Crooks and of Empire City, the big boss. This dude's a huge pig. Uh, as you can see, Crime King. 
and he comes with a cane that uh, fires caps. Also has his trusty pet with him, which I can't remember what that was in the show. It's been a while since I watched it. I don't know if it's some sort of futuristic cat or what it is. As you can see up there too, it's, I can't remember what it is. But this is Big Boss. Looks like a typical uh, mobster there. You see in the back, there's his wanted bio. Emperor of Evil, Mogul Man, his arrest record, convictions. He was the bane of the cops' existence. And he is pretty expensive to find him now. This guy is on a punch card. I think I got a uh, steal of a deal on this one. I got him at uh, Steel City Con 2 um, a few years ago. And I think I paid like 20 bucks for him or something like that. Which is crazy because at the time he was selling for like 80 I think. Now you're probably going to pay easily over 100 bucks for Big Boss. So if you start collecting, you probably don't want to start off with Big Boss. You probably want to start with something a little... A little cheaper and less expensive like Dr. Bad Vibes or someone like that he'd probably be your best bet even Bowser isn't too much money I think you'll pay around like 60 bucks for Bowser now Bowser and Blitz but um that's it for the first series of the Cops and Crooks toy line like I said before the second series I do not own I have not started buying them yet because I never owned them when I was a kid didn't have too much interest in the second series they're all pretty expensive now, so I kind of wish I would have bought them back then. But uh, maybe in the future I will do that toy line. I'm going to show you the vehicles real quick, and then uh, the ones that I own at least, and then I can show some pictures of the other vehicles that they made for this toy line. Um, some of them are cheap, some of them are very expensive. But here's the vehicles for Cops and Crow. So the first one that's part of my personal collection is the Cops Pursuit Jet. And this is one of their vehicles they used. As you can see, these also included caps. Got some old Kmart stickers there. Um, cap firing muzzle blaster. And no figure that came with this one. A lot of these vehicles came with different figures that they didn't produce individually. I picked this guy up for, I think, 15 bucks. Also at a Comic-Con. I got lucky back then. I don't ever see any of this cop stuff anymore at all. It's like super rare. People buy it up right away. Well, there's an actual picture of uh, the Pursuit Jet itself there and the muzzle blaster and this guy is sealed on both sides so pretty cool that's a Pursuit Jet if you're going to collect the vehicles this toy line this will probably be the place to start this one and there's a couple of villain vehicles too that I don't own that uh, like 15 20 bucks a piece they're pretty cheap so good place to start and the next one I own, and the only other one I own, I wish I would have sold some of the other ones I had, is the Assault Vehicle. Now this is one of my favorite toys when I was a kid too, as far as vehicle goes, uh, vehicles go. I um, used to play with this all the time, even in the sandbox, I'd take this thing in there. And this one was special too, because it comes exclusively with the Hardtop action figure. Hardtop is his nickname, he's also a cop. Could not buy him uh, individually or separately. You had to buy the assault vehicle in order to obtain hardtop. It also came with caps. This thing was sick though. Get the back of it here. But basically this this would lift up, figure would sit down underneath it. As you can see in I'm trying to show you an actual picture of the inside of it. Yeah, as you can see right there. And the bumper also includes caps as well. Cap fire machine gun. And there you go. And there's the figure, our hard top, sitting down in there. Do not fire closer than one foot to ear. Do not fire indoors, even though we always did. But yeah, that's the, uh, the assault vehicle. There's the ID card for hard top. Officer Donnie Brooks. Really, really cool. Um, I got this as part of that uh, figure lot that was like 450 bucks or 500 bucks, whatever it was. I have no, I don't think I've seen another one of these since I bought that lot. Maybe like once or twice on eBay, but this would easily go for 150 dollars, 200 bucks now. I would almost guarantee it in this condition. It's this box is sealed. Uh, it's in really good condition too. So I need to figure out a good way to protect these 
you can have them graded by the AFA. They'll put them in acrylic for you, but it's kind of expensive, and I don't really, I'm not really too into getting my figures graded. Not yet, at least. Maybe someday. But uh, I'll probably wrap some plastic around it for storage here soon. But that's all I own for the Cops and Crooks vehicles. I'm going to show you some pictures of the next ones that I, that I plan to get in the future. <laughs> brought back some memories for you let me know down in the comments if you remember this toy line if you own this toy line all when you're a kid or if you own them now and uh i'd be happy to hear from you so thanks for thanks for watching everybody and uh, i'll see you next time